Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I'm so glad you could join me here today. I have the cutest little project to share with you and a tutorial. This is for Authentique Paper and I've used their totally darling new Companion um, collection. This is so cute. Companions is just darling. And this is the 6x6 pad, which I did use in this project along with the 12x12 collection kit. And the patterns are basically the same, just bigger and smaller. I also used the 12x12 sticker sheet that comes with the 12x12 collection kit. So these are little card folios. I thought this would be such a cute way to put pictures of your pets or to make a memorial album for a pet that is passed on. And I did one for cats and one for dogs. So they both measure five and a half inches by seven. They both have a half inch spine. This one obviously is the dog, super cute. This is a border piece that I've fussy cut around and popped up on dimensionals. Little birdie flowers, a little side tab, lots of machine stitching. Um, the stripe and floral print in this collection is dreamy. Here it is again. I just did the reverse here. I have more of the floral here and more of the stripe on this one, but just so, so pretty. And I'll show you how to build the base, how to do the inserts, the whole thing in the tutorial that follows. So this lifts up to open and inside we have two pockets and um, this one is made with one of the cut aparts and I've created an insert this little paper clip embellishment adds as a stop acts as a stopper so this pulls out and I've trimmed down this four by six to fit inside the pocket and on the back side I lined the sentiment here with just plain of this same text paper and stamped a bereavement message there so that talks in that pocket and I really like the way all of these patterns work together added a cute little doggy sticker to the dog bone here and then down on the bottom the doggy collars one more fussy cut dog and then this is kind of the heart of the whole project this folio and this measures four and a quarter by six and I made the base with authentic spectrum cardstock in tricycle red and you will learn how to do this in the tutorial that follows. So we'll just take a quick look through. Inside, there's a little pocket with these cute little um, snap. I don't know what you would call these, but they're cute, aren't they? I don't know. <laughs> little mini folders, I guess. And you can put tiny mementos or pictures inside of these. And these just tuck in this pocket. They have a magnetic closure, which is always fun. And then lots of flaps, room for journaling. You could put large photos here. Fold down pages also with room for journaling. Here's just a large space that you could put a photo or you can journal, you can write in a poem. Um, whatever you want there and then this lifts up room here to journal room for a photo here this folds over here's another little pocket with a tag insert that I just made with scraps that were on the table another little flap with room for a photo and then a flip up photo belly band and then we're back to the cover so super simple and I'll just take you real quickly through the cat um, these are little birdie flowers. These are their grape and tan, which are so pretty. They're a pretty match for this. And then really reasonable ribbon, sherry checkerboard satin, and natural burlap string. Cute little clip up there just to balance things out. And here's the kitty. And I use this flower because it reminded me of kitty whiskers. So this flips up. Same action with the pocket. Slides back down in. And then this is the cat folio, and this is the one that we will build together. So same thing, these cute little inserts, flips, flaps, belly bands, fold outs. Oh, I forgot to line that one, but I have the paper right here. This will be lined like this so that you don't see the doggy, and then that becomes your journal spot. And then just a cute little insert in this pocket with a belly band, a little fold down unit, a flip, a 
belly band, a decorated belly band here, so you can tuck photos back in behind that. And then we're back at the cover. So hang around, don't go away. We will, I'll be right back with the tutorial for building the base and we'll just tackle this step by step and you'll be able to make your own companions folios. Don't go away. Okay, so let's get started building this cat folio using Authentic Companions. Um, once again, I used a 17 by 11 sheet of 18 point grocery bag craft card stock from envelopes.com. And I will put the link below. The first thing you're going to do is bring in your scoring tool. And obviously this is too long to score all in one. I went right down the middle at five and a half. I'm just going to show you how to do this. And then I flipped it bottom to top and I completed scoring at five and a half. So there's that part. Then I turned it long ways and I knew I wanted my folio to be seven inches tall. So I scored here. And then by folding this, I was able to put this in my guillotine cutter and cut out two five by 17 inch cards, which is what we have here. Here's one of them. So put this on your scoring tool on the long side. You're going to score at seven and at seven and a half. That makes your half inch spine. And then what I like to do is push this down into the corner and then I scored again at seven. And that way I have my pocket flap. And this is the base. And from this base, you can do a million different styles of folios. I'm still discovering new ways to use this. So this is how we started. And that's how you start the base. And hold on, I'll be right back and we'll do the next part. And um, this next part is this little folio that we build to go inside the folio, which is always fun to have something inside of something. And I apologize for my voice. Ragweed is already blooming here in North Carolina and I'm fairly miserable. But this is one sheet of Authentic Spectrum Tricycle Red um, cardstock. And I like this because of the weight. It, it really is a great weight for folding. It folds and scores beautifully. Also, it's always going to be a perfect color match for whatever collection you're working with because Authentique makes the, the Spectrum cardstock and Authentique makes the collection. So that's always nice. So the first thing I did was I just cut this into two six inch by 12 inch panels. And then I took score tape and I don't know if you can see this little seam right here, but I put a half inch piece of score tape on the very end of one panel and then very carefully lay, lined up the other end along that score tape line and sealed it. And now I have this big, long panel that I can accordion fold into a folio. To find the center point, this is very high tech people, so pay attention. I fold it in half and I make a little pinch. <laughs> and then I just put a little pencil mark and I left the pencil mark there so you can see it. Do you see that? So now you're going to take your centering ruler and you're going to place it on that pencil mark. Don't place it on the seam where you joined. Place it on that center point that we pinched to find. And I want each panel to be four and a quarter inches wide. So if I go one, two, and an eighth inches and make a pencil mark here and then go one, two, and an eighth inches and make a pencil mark here. Look what happens. I get a perfect four and a quarter inch panel in the center, which is what I wanted. Then you can place this on your scoring tool. So I just butt this into the corner. Let me bring this in so you can see. That first, here's our first four and a quarter inch panel. So I put the corner here and I went four and a quarter inches and scored. And then I went to eight and a half and scored because four and a quarter plus four and a quarter is eight and a half. And there's this little piece left over and that becomes a pocket. So then to go the other direction, I just do the opposite. I, okay. 
So there's our original four and a quarter inch panel. And then I'm just gonna go four and a quarter inches and four and a quarter inches. And I've got another little flap left here. So when we fold this up, it's going to look like this. And then here's our first pocket page when we open it. And then all these pages we're going to decorate. And then it flips again. Here's another pocket page and another set of pages. And then we're back at the front cover. So you see, this is super, super easy to make, but really, really cute. So that is how you do the base and the cover. Now I'll just show you very quickly, and we'll do this together, because I've already pre-cut the panels. I always decorate the inside of my cards first, and I do this because that way stuff does not get messy. So I've pre-cut my panels, and there's that wonderful page, and I don't have the number in front of me, and I forgot to write it down, but it's companions. One side is the doggy bone, and the other side is the kitty cat paw. You want the kitty cat paw, and you're going to cut this to measure um, five and three eighths by six and seven eighths. And I do that because I like an eighth of an inch border, but if you want more of a border, you can cut it differently. That's entirely up to you. So we're just going to, I inked those edges just to cover the raw parts. And this is going to cover the top, just like this. So once again, this is five and three eighths by six and seven eighths. So easy, right? Then I took, for this one, we're going to take this pocket or this some things just fill your heart without trying, and we're gonna turn this into a pocket. So just lay it on your scoring tool, and I didn't really measure. I wanted some of the stitching to show on this. So I just kinda of went along that line so that um, that stitching would show. I'm gonna trim along the top so that everything is consistent, like that. Then I'm just going to fold. So again, to make pockets easy to fold, go up to the score line and angle out. And up to the score line and angle out. And this doesn't make a really huge um, edge, so you just have to do the best you can here. Okay, so at the back of our envelope, we're just going to add some adhesive on the bottom and line it up. And this is going to go fully side to side. I'm just going to add my adhesive to the side flap. So to keep this from falling down inside the pocket, I just took a, a little uh, cute little stripy paper clip that I picked up at the office supply store, and I'm going to put this on the corner like that. Then this is just a scrap of the same paper I've been using. I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm just going to make a little banner flag. And I could measure and all sorts of stuff and go all crazy trying to make this perfect. But I'm not really all that worried about it, although I want it a little more perfect than that. It looks like I was drunk. There we go. <laughs> that looks great. So there's your little banner flag. And I want it doubled because then... I can run it right through my paper clip and I can actually fold it so that it kind of hangs crooked. And I'm going to add a little adhesive in here to hold that in place. 
And then look, this will go in the pocket, but it will keep it from falling down all the way in. You can decorate this with a sticker. Then on the bottom, I have the cute kitty cat paper. I'm just gonna ink around the top and the sides. And hear this, like so. And you guys have seen me make pockets a million different times, but I'll let you see a million and one. Okay, so for the pocket, because this is five and a half inches wide and we want a half inch on each side, this is six and a half by three and a half, and this is the cute little kitty cat paws. So put this on your scoring tool. Score a half. Score a half. Score a half on three sides. And then burnish this down. This is the one that has the dog collar on the reverse side. So up to the score line and then angle out and up to the score line and angle out. Now, this is what we've got. I have been, my circle punch died, so I had to find a new way to make pockets, and it was a happy accident, really, because I really love the way these pockets look. This is a large Spellbinder circle die. I've got a little bit of post-it tape on there, and I'm just gonna center this on the top edge of my pocket. I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine, and it's gonna make the prettiest pocket ever. So don't go away, I'll be right back. Okay, so before I run this through the die cutting machine, I realized that it's gonna dip down and you're gonna see this, so this pocket flap underneath. So we're gonna go ahead, add our adhesive to our bottom fold, and we're just gonna line this up with the bottom of our pocket. And then I'm going to open my card like this and I'm going to run this section through my die cutting machine so it will cut the card stock below and then I have a nice neat pocket with one pass. Hold on, I'll show okay, you. Okay, so second. I ran this through my die cutting machine and I'm just going to peel off my post-it tape and look, perfect, 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 perfect. So I'm going to flip this down, I'm going to add adhesive here. I'm going to fold in my side flaps. I wish I had more room, people. This is such a tiny little space that I work in. And then this is just going to fold up. And there you have a perfect pocket. See what I did there? Perfect. There, and this is how you okay, do the Okay, so let's inside. decorate this little folio together. And I've got it all folded up the way I want it to be. And I've used patterned paper from the six by six uh, bundle pack to line the pages, because I like the size. And I've cut all my pages to four by five and three quarters. And that leaves that pretty little border all the way around the edge. So we're just going to put this together. This is going to go super fast. You can use whatever kind of adhesive you like. I like to use Dries Clear Art Institute. And you can get that from Tamara at Country Craft Creations. You can also get it at Heartfelt Creations. They both carry it. Um, so here's our little front cover. And what I like how this... Uh, collection is done where one side is cats and the other is dogs. This little pocket flap is one inch by five and three quarters.
I've scored a half inch line on this um, three by four card. I'm going to center it at the top. And then to line it, I've cut a piece of cream card stock that is two and seven eighths by three and three eighths. And I'm just going to put this on here to cover up the dog sentiment that's on the reverse side. So now we've got a little pocket on this side, a little flap here. This would be a great place to put photos and journaling. Okay, so I'll just show you again. I just scored a little flap on the side of this card. You can't go a half inch or you'll cover up the image. But you can score a little flap and it really doesn't take much more. A half inch is nice if you can get it, but if you can't get it, you'll take what you can get. And then also, you wanna cover up the doggy on the back. Here we're just going to do a belly band. This was just a scrap and I fold it around the edges of this cream card stock. It's good if it's straight. Okay, so on the back of this one, this we did the flap on the bottom, and I'm just putting this little panel of cream card stuck in there to cover up the dog sentiment, and then that creates a great journaling spot. And that's it. Pretty simple. So it can open out like an accordion and you could actually display this, which is fun. Or you can open it like a little book. And this fits right inside this pocket. Isn't that cool? The last thing I want to show you are these fun little magnetized inserts. These are so cute and they're so easy to make. You start with an 11 by 2 and 3 quarter inch wide piece of cream card stock. And then place it on your scoring tool. You're going to score at 3 and 3 quarters, at 7 and a half, and then you're going to trim it off at 9. And then I just used a quarter rounder punch, a quarter inch quarter rounder punch, to round this bottom corner. And this punch, the deco, egg, deco edge punch to do the top. And then it has a magnetic closure. So we'll make this together. I brought in the pieces. Here is everything all ready to go. And I wanted to show you how to do these magnets. This is a trick I learned from Ginger Rop. And these are basic gray small magnets. And you put the sticky side down put a piece of score tape over the top and then you can put the other magnet on top press it and it'll be perfectly placed and the score tape here is just going to help keep it um, in place so it doesn't shift on you and the front 
we're going to round the top edge. And this doesn't really matter because it's plaid, so it doesn't matter which way you go. And I've cut my paper again about an eighth of an inch, a little bit smaller, and I'll measure for you in a second here. Whoops. I need to round this top edge also to be consistent. So you'll need three panels that measure two and five eighths by three and five eighths. And then for the top, you're just going to use this little deco punch. And you don't have to do this. You can leave it just square if you want. I just thought it was cute. And. The only thing you have to watch is that if you are doing a patterned paper, like a something that has text or um, would clearly be right side up or upside down, check it before you punch to make sure everything is going the right direction. And then these two guys go right inside this pocket. That takes care of that. So here's the cover and I cut a circle tab. Again, I just used my Spellbinders die to cut a partial circle and did some stitching, beautiful little birdie flowers that go with this color palette. And we're just gonna glue this to the front of our card and people, we are done. <laughs> I love this cat with the glasses. So one last quick little thing I wanna do. I just want to Cover up the spines, and it's probably good for me to show you how to do this anyway. So I've just cut a scrap of this pretty stripe to be um, five and five eighths, and this is there's two, and that's three. Make sure I'm straight. And then one. This is where it gets tricky. That looks pretty good actually. And I just want to cover this spine area so it's not see perfect finishing touch right there. Just makes everything look finished. So this is three eighths by five and three eighths. Oops. Cute. Very cute. So there you have it. The truth about cats and dogs with Authentique Companion. So cute. Thanks for joining me. I hope I shared some tips and tricks that you can use in your own crafty adventures. If so, I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. I wish you lots of joy and creativity, and now I'm going to go get my craft on. Thanks for joining me.